What's up dudes? We're gonna be putting some dinghy wheels on the blue boat today. I've had these sitting around for a long time. I was gonna use them on another project and I never got around to it. So why not? I want this boat to be mobile. Actually, <laughs> originally, the very first video to recall, I said I wanted this to be a just a boat to throw in the back of my truck. And I originally thought, well, I'll throw them dinghy wheels on it. And next thing you know, I done bought a trailer and a three and a half horse outboard for it. But I still want to keep it a boat that I can throw in the back of my truck and wheel around to a lot of spots that I fish that don't have boat ramps. And I think it's gonna be pretty possible. This, the little motor I got is super lightweight. The gas tank is on it. So it won't take me but like three or four minutes, get this motor off and pop the wheels on and then throw it in the back of the truck. The boat's still super lightweight. So I don't think it'll be any problem whatsoever to get this thing off the trailer in the back of my truck. Now, as far as the wheels, I am using these from Railblazer. They're Sea Tug dinghy wheels. This is one I've already put together, and it's fairly simple. And the way they're made, like this mounting part, here's the other one. This attaches to the back of your transom, and then of course your wheel attaches to it. But the way they're made, you can just pop this pin out, it slides out, and then this whole wheel and sprocket will come out. So you're just left with this on the back of your boat. And I'm gonna try to put it at a height to where it's not in the water, so it won't be like drag or anything like that, which I don't, I mean, y'all watch the video of the little, the powerful three and a half horse Mercury. Uh, I don't really think it's anything I gotta worry about. But we're gonna try to do it the right way and make everything look clean and make it very, very functional. Uh, I really want this to be a versatile boat. So we'll have the motor, We'll have the dinghy wheels that we can take on and off and uh, we can go anywhere. All right, let's get to work. All right, these are pretty easy to put together. You just take the fork and slide it over your wheel. Then you have this axle that has two little nipples on each side and you just kind of line it up with the two slots that's in the fork. All right, once you get it in, it's got this slot right here. And what you wanna do is take a screwdriver and push in. As you see, it's got a, like a little locking thing. You push down, turn clockwise, and it pops. You see it's locked. All right, then you got the locking shaft. This thing pops out. And you'll slide your bracket over your wheel. You see he's got these notches to put it in different positions. And then your pin will just slide in all the way through. And once you get it pushed through, you flip this over and then it'll lock back into place. Like that. And there you go. I mean, that's pretty much it. Right now, as you see, it's got this little arrow pointing to the unlock. And if you were to push it down where it's on the notch, then turn it to the lock, now it won't come out. You twist it to the unlock, it should pop out which it's a lot easier doing this while you're it's attached to the boat. But you get the gist of it. It's pretty simple to put these things together. All right, with these wheel brackets, I want to get them as high as I can. That way they're out of the water line most of the time, I'm hoping. And in order to do that, I had to take my handles off. As you can see, I've done went in there with a carriage bolt on this one hole that was left from the handle. So I'm gonna put this one in over here. I used that so it's a little bit flatter and I actually took a little flat disc and ground it down a little bit. That way, we can put this right here and it's sitting pretty flush all the way around. This bracket's got these little braces in the back to, I guess, to make it more rigid. And uh, if you line everything up right, which I kind of got going on right here, this little bolt head or this rivet is going in one of them little dead spots. And then I got this one hitting in a dead spot too. So like right here, it's gonna work really good. Now they send you like a little template for you to drill your hole zone. I'm just gonna use a clamp to hold it in place and then drill my four holes and I think we should be good. Uh, I can't use the hardware they sent, the bolts, because they're too short. Now the bolts they sent for the kit are two inches. And then after you add the thickness of the washers and of course your lock nut and everything, they're too short for what I'm using. So I picked up some that are two and a half inches and I think these are gonna work good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this on there and drill my holes out. 
All right, once we got it lined up where it needs to be and it's level, we'll go ahead and mark our four holes. If you can't reach it with your marker, like it won't go all the way in to touch the surface, you can just like color up the end of one of your bolts and put it in there and kind of wall it around. It should leave you a mark. All right, we're gonna drill these holes out there a quarter inch. I'm gonna go ahead and put some RTV or marine sealant in all the holes. Now right, you can go ahead and put your bolts in your brackets. The way these things go is it's the bolt and the small washer slides into the hole. Then on the back side, you put this little rubber washer. And you just pop it on there. Hopefully, all of our holes line up. I mean, if you don't want to mess your threads up like I probably just did, you could probably just screw those in if it's a little tight fit like mine was. And on the wood side, you're going to put the little nylon washer, then the bigger washer, the fender washer, and of course, your lock nut. Now all I'm going to do is tighten them all up. All right. All right, now we should be able to put these wheels on. Flip a little lever. And once you lock it in place, it's good to go. Roll it around wherever you need to. Once you get to your spot, unlock it. You can move it up out of your way. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to have this motor on when I run the boat, the only, my only option would be to, you know, push it way out here so I'll have room to steer the boat. I mean, that's, that's pretty close right there at that position. But I plan on any time that I'm just going to use the motor, I'll probably be in the trailer anyways. I just pop the pin out and take the wheels off. That's one reason I wanted to mount it up high. One thing is I was able to grab the transom by mounting it up all the way up here. If you saw that bolt's really low, it's only got like a seven inch transom on this thing. Uh, any other, if I mounted it any lower, I was gonna have to add wood to the bottom of my transom. But this way, it should be pretty much out of the water. And like I said, it's got a good grip on the transom. Should, everything should be real sturdy. All right, let's uh, do this same thing the other side and we'll be done. It's pretty easy little process. I was using the back handles for my ratchet straps. So I picked up these little bolts that I'm gonna try to make work with that second hole for the, the handles where the handles were. And maybe that'll work out for me. I'm hoping so. If not, I'm gonna have to figure out some other way. I don't wanna put a strap all the way across the back. I don't, I think that looks like crap. I'm gonna lob my bolts off, those middle bolts, and put a little paint on here, clean everything up a little bit. Then we'll be ready to test these things out. I got an impromptu fishing day ahead of me. I ain't even had time to paint my bolts, but we had real bad storms come through here. Y'all probably saw it hit Little Rock and West Tennessee, and I don't have any electricity. Uh, luckily, I didn't have any damage, even though I live in the woods, as you see. No trees fell, really, really lucky. But uh, I have nothing else to do today, so I might as well go fishing. All right, let's see if we can get that boat with those wheels to the back of my truck so we can go hit a little spot.
Well, all right, the maiden fishing voyage with the blue boat turned out pretty good. The wheels did what they were supposed to. They are easy to deal with. I mean, I knew they would. If you recall, I used them on the orange boat. Pretty simple process with putting them on. You know, just make sure your transom's deep enough. If your transom isn't deep enough or you can't get it high enough on your boat, uh, you're probably gonna have to add some kind of extra support on your transom to drill into. But other than that, I don't see any kind of issues that you might have with installing these little dinghy wheels. If you're wondering why, you know, what's the point of, you know, having dinghy wheels? Well, it's a whole lot better than dragging your boat over concrete or gravel or whatever it is. These little riveted boats can't take a whole lot of abuse for lo and behold, you have some leaks and some loose rivets. So I think they're worth it. Yes, I do know you can make your own wheels. You know, pretty simple and it's a whole lot cheaper. You know, just go to Harbor Freight, get you a couple wheels and some angled aluminum. I mean, it's pretty simple. But the thing that I like about these wheels, other than I don't have to build them, is that they have the different positions. And at least with the wheels I've seen homemade, the DIY ones, all you have is up and down. So the extra positions on these and, and the ease of operation, to me, make it worth it. Yes, they're not the cheapest wheels in the world, but I feel like they'll hold up over time. And I mean, you just, you just bolt them on. I mean, that's pretty simple. I don't know this company from Adam. I'm just trying to show you their product, a product I've used before, and you know, it works. It's, it's pretty nice stuff. So uh, I'm excited about putting these wheels to a lot of use. Yeah, I know the place I went the other day, I had plenty of room. I could have kept this boat on the trailer and got it real close to the water and got it in. But the wheels really do help, especially with moving your boat around the yard and stuff. I mean, like my whole driveway is concrete or asphalt down towards the end. And, you know, if you just can't carry your whole boat at, at a time, you're going to have to be dragging it. And that's just, that's not good. But we're pretty much about done with this little blue boat. I'm actually working on it right now, redoing the little front bumper, the stop because uh, I didn't really like how it was lining up. But other than that, I mean, I'm pretty much done with it and ready to really put it to use. Well, earlier in this video when I was fishing, I mean, did a lot of trolling in. I really wish I would have moved that seat post back a little bit because it does kind of sit a little heavy in the front. You have to be mindful of what you're doing. It's gonna be real interesting when I go to one of these spots and hook into like a five or six pound Grinnell in this little boat without trying to, you know, get wet. But we shall see. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. It's a cool little boat. A couple things I wish I would have done, you know, hindsight, but that's any boat that you're going to build, at least any boat that I've built. You're always going to have things that you wish you would have done a little bit different, and that's okay because you can always buy another boat, right? <laughs> really not sure about my next project. I don't have one. I have an idea in my head, and I'm looking out for one or two different types of boats, something different for the channel, something different for me. I might be right back to doing a John boat next. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next one.